Welcome to the channel and welcome to my review of Codex Astra Militarum. God got mean. Um, everything that God could do, they can do a little bit better. Uh, we're talking about uh, Lehman Russ's battle tanks firing twice. Super heavy vehicles got much more mean. The Basilisk was already very good, but it's minus 3 AP instead of minus 2 AP with its Earth Shaker cannon shell. There are some frightening combos and stratagems in here as well. Some stratagems will allow you, and combos will allow you to fire Overwatch on fours and uh, re-roll to hit and re-roll to wound. You've got stratagems where you can outflank Layman Russes if you want to. It is a good book. There are no new models in here, but the layout in here is much better than the index and they've combined stuff from the sisters bit and from the tech priest bit. And I should also mention as well that the Militarum Tempestus sit firmly within this book as well. They've got uh, Militarum Tempestus essentially have their own regiment keyword, um, just like all the other regiments. But the layout's very good. Uh, it's a good book. Give you some idea of the layout here. This is the index with, um, we've got troops, elites, heavies, elites. It's all a bit scattered all over the place. But over here, you'll find all your troops together. There's the Primaris Psyker, see after the uh, HQ, he's now a HQ, and then troops, troops, uh, Militarum Tempestus Scions coming in here, uh, Master of Ordnance, Platoon Commanders, goes on to Elites, Sergeant Harker, Militarum Tempestus Command Squads in the Elites, and Milita Ministorum Priests and Crusaders in the Elites. So you can see Crusaders and Priests and Harker and uh, the Command Squad, these were in these four bits here were in three different parts of the index over here, but it clearly goes from HQ to troops to elites through the book. The layout is so much easier to follow than this, jumping through different sections. I like it. Big thank you to Games Workshop for allowing me to preview this book early. Um, it's up for pre-order on the day you're watching this, if you watch this on the day I release this video, and it's up for sale next Saturday. Um, if you're watching this in a month's time, then it is up for sale already. So thanks to Games Workshop for that. No, I can't show you every single page in this book, or they'll tell me off, so don't ask. Um, but uh, I can tell you that um, a lot of the points costs in here, as ever, there's been points costs adjusted, and nearly all of them are going down. So the biggest drops are the Baneblade, Shadow Sword, and the Hellhammer have all gone down by 40 points. Valkyrie is down by 20 points. Hydra is down by 10 points. Layman Russ is down by 10 points. And Layman Russ has got mean as well, so that's pretty good. Uh, some tweaks with some of the weapon systems as well. Hotshot Volley Guns down by 3 points. Melter Cannon down by 15 points. Plasma Gun was 15 points, but... Um, it's 13 points if you bring it on a veteran, or only 7 points for a plasma gun if you bring it on a model that hits on a 4-up rather than a 3-up. So not many points, tweaks, changes between 12 and 14 overall, I think. Um, but they're all down, which is good. We like that. Anyway, let's dive into it. So I haven't read the narrative yet, so I can't tell you about the narrative because I can't tell you how many times I've read Imperial Guard narrative. A lot is the answer. Very interested to read some of these histories here to see if they bring in the uh, um, the fall of Cadia into this book as well and how that ties in with the narrative. What I did do is jump straight away to all the rules at the back of the book and start reading them. Start reading them rather solidly. So let's get to the rule section. Uh, there are no new models. I think I mentioned that. Um, but they've done what they did before in making some converted models and sticking pictures of the converted models in here. Let me find them. Yes, I was looking straight at the page there. Here are some kit bash models that Games Workshop have put together. They did this in the Grey Knight book as well. These aren't new. These are just models that they have made up. Anyway, on to the main rules. Um, the regiment keyword, so just like Space Marine uh, um, chapters or the Legion words from the Chaos Space Marines or from the Forge World keywords, you now have a keyword, a regiment keyword, which means something. And if you're Militarum Tempestus, then Militarum Tempestus becomes your regiment keyword. And the way to benefit from a regiment keyword is everything in that detachment must have that regiment keyword with some exceptions, such as Ogrins and Commissars, and we'll get to them later on. It tells you rather clearly what the exceptions are. So unlike, say, the Space Marine Codex, where everything in it must be 
the same uh, uh, chapter. In here, you can have stuff from, you can have 50% of your regiment could be Kathshans or could be Cadians, and the other 50% of that detachment could have auxiliary troops in and Ogrins in and other things in it, and you will still be benefit from the regiment keyword. And here are the orders. We know what the orders do. However, here are some regiment orders, which you can get depending on what regiment you pick. But even before we jump into that, we'll jump into grinding advanced games workshop leak this one already. This is the rule that you get for Lehman Rust battle tanks, which means if you move and fire, you don't suffer a minus to hit with the main turret on your Lehman Rust battle tank. It's basically always hitting on a four when it moves and fires. But if a Lehman Rust battle tank moves under half of its movement, no matter what it, how, how damaged it is, it can fire that gun twice. So uh, that's just crazy good stuff so long as it hits the same unit so a layman russ main battle tank firing its battle cannon will roll 2d6 uh, instead of 1d6 firing at the same unit twice if you've got a punisher gun on there that'll be t uh, 40 shots rattling into that unit which is <laughs> it's crazy good we can see these layman russ are slowly making their way up the table now booming away if you've got a vanquisher a vanquisher was one shot firing all the way across the battle grid it stays still. Let's face it, vanquishers very rarely ever move. You're firing twice with that uh, tank killing weaponry. Grinding advance has changed. Uh, let's have a look through these orders. So, Cadian tank order. Tank orders only apply to tanks, Talans, and the Cadians. But essentially, for your Cadian troops, um, you reroll the die when determining the number of attacks the ordered model can make with a turret weapon as described in the grinding advanced ability above. So turret weapons with grinding advanced ability. Normally it might be a D6 for a plasma annihilator or a layman rust battle cannon. You can re-roll it. And if you're firing twice, you can re-roll the dice and then re-roll it and then roll the dice and then re-roll it. It's, it's going to be a frightening number of shots. Catagens can uh, re-roll the dice when determining the number of a, the, order, uh, the number of attacks the ordered unit can make with flamers and heavy weapons, heavy flamers. And uh, you don't get cover from them when, when firing, because if you're in cover and you're hitting someone with a heavy flamer, it's minus one AP at the moment. These guys will just burn straight through their cover. They're very good with flamers. Valhallans. Um, <laughs> there's two here that allow units to fire into close combat. And Valhallans are one of them. The ordered unit can shoot at enemy units that are within one inch of friendly units. But if you get hit rolls of one, it hits your friendly guys. So there could be a big scree going on with your conscripts there. And you order your veterans right next to them to rapid fire into them. On ones they'll be burning away conscripts. But on whatever else, you're going to be shooting into that combat. Uh, the other one that can shoot into combat, where are they? It was just below. It's the Voice Troyans. So the Voice Troyans, if they are in combat, essentially, until the end of the phase, the ordered unit can fire any of its weapons while within one inch of an enemy, regardless of the weapon type. But if they do so, they must target enemy units within one inches. Basically, if they're locked up in combat and they get in cut down, suddenly they can whip out their las guns or plasma guns or whatever and fire into that combat. Um, I can't recall any other abilities at this time in 8th edition 40k that allow units to fire into close combat. Guard can now do it because life is cheap in the guard. Armageddon. Until the end of the phase, the ordered unit can shoot and then immediately embark within a friendly transport vehicle. So again, your veterans could be here with all their plasma guns or their mantras. They can shoot and then jump in a vehicle right next to it. Or it could be a super heavy like a shadow sword or something like that. Not a shadow sword. Stormlord is a has got the um, transport capacity and you can shoot and jump in it and of course uh, uh, a shadow stormlord stormlord has a, a lot of transport capacity there could be a vet unit there shooting and jumping it a vet unit there shooting and jumping into it essentially in your movement phase the guys get out and then you order them because orders happening in the shooting phase they shoot and then they jump back in it again brilliant absolutely brilliant um you won't be able to kill the little griblies with a voice drawing units with the armageddon units talon tank orders the talon tank orders the ordered model can move up to six inches in this phase either before or after it shoots as if it were the movement phase so in the shooting phase free movement up to six inches they'll move and shoot or shoot and move nice 
Militarum Tempestus, um, re-roll all fail to wound rolls when attacking vehicles or monsters. Uh, Mordians, um, until the end of phase, the audit unit can target characters with their rapid fire weapons, even if they're not the closest enemy unit. So Mordians can snipe out characters, uh, regardless of whether the character is the closest model or not, with rapid fire weapons. Standout orders in here. Cadians getting that re-roll. Um, Armageddon units jumping out of vehicles, shooting and jumping back in units, particularly if you're bringing super heavy ones. They're all nice and flavoursome. Probably Catachens are probably the weakest because you're going to want to load up on a lot of flamers, and which means you're close to the enemy to hit with flamers and you're a guards, guardman, so you don't necessarily want to be close to the enemy because, you know, you're just a guardman, guardsman, and the enemy could be um, 30 foot tall, towering wraith monstrosities. But they can burn it out anyway. So some very strong units. Each of them have some very strong abilities there. Each of them have flavour. And each of them play to the strengths and the narrative behind uh, these particular regiments. And uh, yeah, I, I like them. I like the Armageddon one a lot. Right, flipping through the book, we can see how the layout's a lot clearer here. Creed, Company Commander, Tank Commander, Knight Commander Pass. I should mention while we're on these that uh, the rule for emergency plasma events has changed. Previously in Layman Russes, if you rolled a 1, I think it was, then um, the emergency plasma events would kick in and you would lose 6 mortal wounds and you wouldn't be able to fire that gun again. Now with emergency plasma events firing plasma guns from Lehman Russes, um, you get a mortal wound per one that you roll to hit. So say you're rolling nine dice and they're all overcharged because you've got D6 on your turret and D3 on the two side turrets there, you're firing a plasma cushioner. You don't have to worry about those ones so much because they're only every single one that you roll. If you roll a couple of ones, say two ones, that'll be two mortal wounds instead of six mortal wounds. And it doesn't say anything about not firing that gun again, as it did previously in that book, in the index. You can keep firing your plasma guns, uh, taking those mortal wounds here. Conscripts are one of the other little changes as well. Um, all they've done with conscripts is they have an ability called raw recruits. When conscripts receive an order, you roll a dice on a four up, they can complete that order. On a one, two, three, conscripts cannot complete that order. So 50-50 chance of managing to get your conscripts to do anything. Of course, you could spend a command point to re-roll that dice. I think I mentioned the Earthshaker cannon in the Basilisk has moved from a minus two AP to a minus three AP. And another nice change in here is the Valkyrie has got a new rule called Roving Gunship. Remember Valkyries with their all their guns are heavy, and as soon as they move, they're hitting on fives all the time. Well, roving gunship for Valkyries means if they're in hover mode and moving around, then they don't suffer the minus one to hit for moving and firing with heavy weapons. Because Valkyries were pretty poor, I think you'll find. All those guard players out there knew that Valkyries have got a bit crap, really. So roving gunship makes them a bit better again. Plus, they've had a minus 20 point. I think it's minus 20, where's my notes? Uh, yeah, minus 20 point reduction. However, my most new basilisk, look, minus 3 AP on the Earthshaker cannon. Very nice. And there's a stratagem which allows you to reroll a hit with these, or is it reroll a wound? I think it's reroll a hit with these now. But the best rule that they've changed is the steel beer moth rule for super heavies. Previously, Bane Blades, Bane Hammers. Shadow Swords, Doom Hammers, all of these guys, as soon as they moved, they were firing their heavy weapon and hitting on fives. A one in three chance of actually hitting something, rather than a 50-50 charge. But the Steel Beer Moth rule has changed. It's the same, the bit of it is the same, which is they can fall back and still fire their heavy guns. If you can hear the bell, sorry about that, my cat is down by my foot. <laughs> it's ringing away. Um... Yeah, so they can still fall back and fire their heavy guns and charge again as they could beforehand. That's what Steel Beer Moth does. Allows you to fall back and still fire and charge. But also, um, it mentions that you can, where is it? The model does not suffer the penalty to hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. So now your super heavies can move and fire all the heavy weapons. But that's not all. I also mentioned that the Bane Blade, Hellhammer, Shadow Sword has got minus 40 point reduction. But that's not all. 
every single one of their big guns has gone up by D6. So if there was a gun such as the Bane Sword Quake Cannon that fired D6, now it fires heavy 2D6. Um, the Bane Blade uh, Heavy Battle Cannon, Bane Blade Battle Cannon, where is it? Used to fire 2D6, now it fires 3D6. There's a lot of shots gone down in points. Can move and shoot and fire more shots. There are two exceptions to this rule. The Storm Lord, that's the one with all the 20 shots. Is it called the Storm Lord? The Storm Lord, the 20 shot massive Vulcan, uh, Vulcan Mega Bolter is still a heavy 20 shot. And the Shadow Swords gun has also changed a little bit. Uh, it used to be D6, now it's 3D3. Um, Shadow Swords were notoriously unreliable at either get one hit in or a couple of hits in. Now at 3D3, it's always going to get minimum three hits in and potentially up to nine. And as it has strength 16, minus 5 AP, 2, 6 damage, which you can re-roll if you're firing the damage, if you're firing at titanic things, the Shadow Sword will be your go-to weapon for taking out Titans or Imperial Knights. 3D6 shots now. Strength 16, which means it's wounding Knights on 2s. Yeah, so these things got meaner. They can move and fire, and their big guns got more powerful. I think that's the changes, the primary changes that I saw in this book. There's probably one or two more tweaks in here that I missed. Rough Riders are not in this book, so if you want to bring them, you're going to have to get the index, get the uh, um, data sheet from the index and use that, use that. There's a couple of interesting additions like Ogrim Bodyguard. Nork Bell Dog is still here. There's good old Nork. But um, you can bring... Ogryn Bodyguard now, which has the same loyal to the end rule, and here it's called Bodyguard. It still does exactly the same thing as Nork. Basically, if there's any characters within three inches of your bodyguard, you can roll a dice and on a two up, they'll take a mortal wound rather than your character. Previously, Nork was the only one that could do it, but if you want to keep more characters alive, then get more Ogryn Bodyguards. And uh, it's a single model, leave them in the back somewhere next to your dudes and so when your platoon commanders or your company commanders are getting sniped by that vindicare assassin across the other side of the battle grid you've got a bodyguard next to it who can take the mortal wound for you instead a couple of little additions like that are very good and the layout's just really really good look it's just it's so much cleaner than the index uh right let's dive into the other stuff Bulwark of Humanity. So, um, troops get objectives secured. That's fairly common, basically, for those who don't know. Um, if you have a troops unit next to an objective, you don't have to out, um, outnumber your enemy to score that objective. Regimental doctrines are these, and to benefit from a regimental doctrine, everything in your detachment must have the same regiment, unless it's an advisor or an auxiliar. So it's quite a lot of You've got quite a lot of choice here. Tech priests, servitors, ministerium priests, crusaders, um, valkyries, uh, militarum, basically militarum tempestus, prefectus, and scholasta psychana. That's the weird vein psychers. You can put any of these units in your regiment detachment and um, you're good to go. For regiment purposes, militarum tempestus count as a regiment. And in match play games, there's a little rule here which says basically you can only bring one commander uh, per regiment that you bring. Um, so you can have some Katachans and some Cadians and bring a regiment commander and a regiment commander. but um, And all Militarum Tempestus. But you'd need multiple detachments to get multiple commanders in it. And when I say commander, I mean command squad. Right, regimental doctrines. The new hotness. Regimental doctrines, remember this applies to tanks as well. So basically, Cadians, if they stay still, they can reroll hit rolls for one, which is good. And if it's an infantry unit and they've got the take aim order, they get prescience, they can reroll everything. Catachans, infantry's uh, have plus one strength, plus one leadership. And every time a vehicle with this doctrine fires a ranged weapon with a random number of attacks, like heavy d6, heavy 2d6, you can reroll one of the dice used to determine one of, uh, one of the number of attacks made so basically their tanks or their basilisks or their manticores or their death strikes 
are always re-rolling one of those dice. Basically, Katachan, Brutal Strike. Would you mind? I'm trying to do a review. Uh, basically, they're very, very good. Um, a voice drawn heirloom weapons. Oh no, we didn't do the Valhalla and things. Infantry units with this doctrine, half the number of models that flee rounding up if they fail a morale test. And vehicles with this doctrine ha um, that have a damage table, double the number of wounds that they have remaining for the purposes of de determining what their characteristics are. So their vehicles are better for longer. Voice Troyan. Um, units with this doctrine add six inches to the maximum range of heavy or rapid fire weapons, which would normally have a range of 24 inches or more. Basically, longer range Laos cannons. I like it. And longer range uh, heavy bolters as well would be interesting. They're reaching out and touching further. Um, Armageddon, industrial efficiency. Infantry units with this doctrine double the number of attacks they make with rapid fire weapons. So imagine first rank fire second rank fire, and then doubling the number of attacks at a range of up to 18 inches. It's scary. Vehicles with this doctrine tr treat attacks against them with an AP value of minus one as having AP zero. So their vehicles are tougher. Talan, swift as the wind. Um, Infant units with this doctrine can advance and still shoot any weapon type except for heavy. And when they do so, they do not suffer the usual penalties. Vehicles with this doctrine do not suffer the penalty to their hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons at all. Basically, their tanks are moving and firing not just the turret weapons, but all the other weapons on that vehicle are moving and firing heavy weapons. Boom. And Titanic vehicles, when they advance, they basically treat all their weapons as assault weapons, which is just all the heavy weapons as assault weapons, which is just crazy good as well, because Titanic weapons... Uh, it's just, it's good. <laughs> they can uh, basically um, uh, uh, always advance with their super heavy guns and, and fire a lot. I like it. I like the, I like it. Moving on. Militarum Tempestus Stormtroopers. If a model with this doctrine is shooting a target at half range, it can make an extra shot for each hit roll of a 6 plus. They don't generate additional attacks. So Militarum Tempestus have probably got the short end of the stick as far as these... Um, Regimental doctrines are concerned, but Militarum Tempestus units are very good in this edition. Um, the ability to pop in with an orbital deployment there. Deep Strike essentially nine inches away with LAS, uh, sorry, with plasma guns and melt guns and all that sort of stuff. And remember their order, their specific order allows them to reroll wounds versus monsters or tanks. So, um, Yes, this regimental doctrine is probably the worst one, but they are mean in themselves. And the Mordians have a parade drill. Basically, if the base of every model in an infantry unit is touching another model, then they're plus one leadership, and you can add one to the hit rolls for that unit when firing overwatch. And vehicles add one when they fire overwatch if they're within three inches of another friendly Mordian vehicle. So let's say you've got three Lehman Russ battle tanks with Punisher cannons on that are staying still. That's 40 shots, 40 shots, 120 shots, because they're all firing twice because of the grinding advance rules. And they're hitting on a plus one. And you give them this strategy, defensive gunners. When that unit fires overwatch, they hit on a five, six, instead of only a six. And then with this Mordian parade drill, They'll be hitting on a four, five, six. That would be 100, if it was Punisher cannons, that'd be 120 shots hitting on a four, five, six when you charge them. And you could give them this. Vengeance for Cadia. Use the stratagem when you select one of your Astra, Astra Militarum units to shoot or fire Overwatch. Reroll failed hit and wound rolls. So when you're shooting something, reroll failed hit or failed wound rolls or Mordians, for example. Can essentially get tanks to hit on fours on overwatch and re-rolling to hit and re-rolling to wound and that costs a command point and that costs a command point i would not want to charge a mordian tank line i can tell you in all other purposes the mordian parade drill thing isn't so great because remember you've got to be charged it only works in the overwatch only works in that phase where some of these such as the katachan ones just kicks in all the time a Talan one moving and firing their heavy guns without penalty kicks in. Well, this will kick in throughout the battle. This only kicks in when you're getting charged. 
However, if you're bringing Mordians and sticking to the narrative, then you're probably bringing a lot of tanks and probably just sitting back and firing lots and lots of stuff anyway. So this one's a bit more situational. Some of these are obviously a lot better, um, but they're all they're all very worthwhile. Except for maybe the Metam Tempesta Stormtroopers ones, but as I mentioned, Stormtroopers are pretty mean anyway. I mean, even the Valhalla and Grim Demeanor doesn't seem that strong, but um, doubling the number of wounds they have, have, for, the, have remaining for the purposes of determining the characteristics for vehicles when they're shooting. This is going to kick in. In turn 2, turn 3, turn 4, when your layman Russes are injured, or even your super heavy tanks are injured, they're still going to be firing a lot more effectively throughout the game, throughout the whole game. Um, than some of the other regiments. It's it's this one to me just. I think this one is is the hidden gem in here. That's just my opinion. Mind you, doubling the amount of rapid fire weapons that you have at um, eighteen inch range is mean, and treating minus one AP to zero versus your vehicles is mean as well. Remember bolt rifles or Gauss flares or heavy bolters. This will keep your vehicles alive for longer. This makes your vehicles meaner and rapid firing double tapping plasma guns particularly if they're overcharged this is they're all pretty good i like them stratagems i can't show you every single one games workshop gets slightly annoyed with me i can't show you every single one but they've got a chunk and these are the ones that are regiment specific and normally when we look at stratagems some of them are good some of them not so good but here i can say that some of them are good and some of them are just frighteningly excellent Consolidate squads. Use this strategy at the end of your movement phase. Choose an infantry squad from your army that is within two inches of another infantry squad from the same regiment. Merge these into a single unit. Do you want conscript blobs that are 40, 50? For just a command point, do that in one turn and merge your conscript blobs up together. And then, then in the next turn, do it again and merge a conscript blob up together. Lovely. Oh yeah, this is the one that I mentioned earlier. Start a shooting phase, select a Basilisk or Wyvern, and they reroll fail to hit rolls with an aerial spotter for two command points. A bit pricey, but good. Mobile command vehicle, give orders from inside a Chimera. It's the regiment ones on the back that are very good. Cadian stratagem for two command points. Uh, after a Cadian unit from your army has inflicted an unsafe wound on an enemy unit, add one to all the hit rolls for other Cadian units that target the same enemy unit in this phase. So hitting on threes all of a sudden, it's it's nice. Well, the voice Royans add in one to hit rolls. Remember these stratagems can be used on super heavy vehicles as well. So your super heavy hit in on a three. We're sending them went this one, send in the next wave. If an infantry unit has been wiped out, you can just bring it back on again. But perhaps the best stratagem here is the Talons ambush. Three command points and it should be. Use this stratagem during deployment. Choose up to three Talan units to set up in ambush instead of placing them on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, these units can strike from hiding, set them up wholly within seven inches of the battlefield edge and more than nine inches away from enemy models. Essentially, for three command points, you can outflank three Talan units. Those could be super heavies. All layman Russ regiments. Uh, Squadrons. I'm thinking of squadrons. That's just it's three command points, but it should be three command points because you could do some nasty shenanigans with that one. Here's a nice little combo. Armageddon strategy. And remember, these guys can be given an order to jump back in vehicles after they've jumped out. So you place this on a unit of infantry. They jump out of a vehicle. They're re-rolling hit rolls of one until the end of the phase. They can be ordered to jump back in again. And if you're within 18 inches, their regiment thing kicks in as well, which means they're double tapping rapid fire weapons within 18 inches as well. So just a command point there. And suddenly some guys, plasma vets jumping out of a vehicle are going to get a lot of shots in, going to get some re-rolls and going to be able to get straight back in that vehicle again. So they're not standing there proud, ready to get ripped open. Some very, very interesting stratagems. Okay, in the Psychana discipline, these three are the same. Terrifying Visions, Case of the Emperor, Psychic Barrier. We know what they do. What do the other three do? Well, uh, Night Shroud is minus one to hit. You pick an Astra Militarum unit, cast it on them, and then the enemy are minus one to hit when they're shooting at it. 
which is nice, particularly if you double up with Psychic Barrier. Remember, Psychic Barrier is plus one to an armor save. So again, you've got your super heavy tank there or something you really want to keep. You could fire Psychic Barrier on it, get its three up save to a two up. You could put Night Shroud on it. So enemies that are targeting it, targeting it are minus one to hit it. So these two will work very well together. Mental Fortitude, pick an Astra Militarum unit and that unit becomes fearless. And then Psychic Maelstrom is a walk charge value of seven, but it's very interesting. It's like Smite, but doesn't hit the closest enemy unit. You can pick an eight enemy unit within 18 inches and roll a dice and on a two up, that enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. Then roll a dice and on a three up, that enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. Then roll a dice and on a four up, it suffers a mortal wound. Then a five up, then a six. Basically you get a two, then a three, then a four, then a five, then a six. And you keep rolling until either the enemy unit passes a disgustingly resilient save or a way to negate a mortal wound, then you stop. Or you keep rolling the two, then the three, then the four. And say you need a five the next time around and you rolled only a two, then it'll stop. So it gets harder and harder and harder to get mortal wounds on a unit. But um, potentially you could do up to five mortal wounds on a unit with a warp charge value of seven. You could double that up with smite. Smite a unit, psychic mails from a unit, and kick in those mortal wounds. Being able to pick a unit 18 inches away and doing a mortal wound on a two, and then a three, then a four, is nice. The relics are just exactly as you would expect. Different weapon options, upgrade your weapons here. Uh, there's some specific, the Tatalan or Katachan or Valhallen. Um, the two best ones are these ones. Basically, you can give your character a four up and vulnerable save, and once per game he can heal d3 wounds but this is the best one each time your opponent uses a stratagem roll a dice on a on a five up you gain a command point you know that ultramarine one and ultramarine players love using their stratagems because on a five up they get their command points back again so they're spending lots of command points well you could be getting lots of command points back too free command points everyone but while we're here the laurels of command are pretty good as well basically on a four up um, you can give another order. An officer issues an order, they roll a dice, and on a four up, they can issue another order. So some good relics here, exactly what you'd expect for from the relics, and um, some of them are rather tasty. Now onto warlord traits. Do you want more command points? Well, this is probably, this is the Ultramarines one. Basically, you, while your warlord is live, you can reroll a single hit, wound, or saving throw per battle. And in addition, on a five up, you get command points back. Then after deployment, but before the first battle round begins, pick a unit in your opponent's army. You can reroll fail to wound rolls for Astra Militarum units from your army when you target that, so long as your warlord is alive. Um, implacable determination. When your warlord and a single friendly unit within three inches of them advance, they may both add six inches to their move characteristic for their movement phase. Instead of rolling a dice, they're a bit quicker. Draconian Discipline, you can reroll failed morale tests for Astra Militarum Infantry within six inches of your Warlord. Bellowing Voice, add three inches to the range of any abilities such as an Aura Discipline or Voice of Command. And Master of Command, your Warlord gains the Voice of Command ability. If your Warlord already has the Voice of Command or Tank Order's ability, they may instead issue one additional order per turn. But let's face it, Grand Strategist, getting command points back is what you're going to do. Then we have Regiment Warlord Traits, which you may pick instead of these Warlord Traits. It's up to you. However, if you have a named character from a Regiment, you must pick one of the Regiment Warlord Traits. And Yarrick gets the Master of Command Warlord Trait um, automatically. The Cadian Warlord Trait allows Cadians to reissue the same order on a 4-up to uh, units of the same unit type as the original target. Catachans are about heroic interventions. Valhallans roll a dice every time your warlord suffers a wound and on a five up that wound is ignored. Um, and if the warlord is a vehicle then on a six up that wound is ignored. Um, Voistrans, um, reroll failed to hit and wound rolls in the fight phase for attacks made by the warlord only. Armageddon, um, add one to the warlord's attacks characteristics and add one to any wound rolls made for your warlord in the fight phase. Talan, Swift Attacker, your Warlord and all friendly Talan units within 6 inches of them can charge even if they fell back that turn. So a bit of counter attack going on there with the Talans. 
Militarum Tempestus, your warlock can attempt to deny one psychic power in each enemy psychic phase in the same manner as the psychic. Again, very situational for these Militarum Tempestus. And Mordian Roller Dice for each model that flees from any friendly Mordian unit within six inches of your warlord in the morale phase. And on a four up, that model doesn't flee. Anyway, after the warlord traits, we have the points costs. And after the points costs, we have the specific tactical objectives for the guard and that's it and i wish i could go into more detail i wish i could point the camera at every single page and tell you every little thing i can in this book but i can't because you know copyright it's also against the youtube policy and as well as games workshop getting very upset um so i can't do that um but what i can tell you just from that overview more than a review because let's face it that was more of an overview than a review is that this is a good book Guard got mean. Layman Rust Battle Tanks are better now. They can move and fire more guns. Super Heavy Tanks are better now. They can move and fire their guns uh, more resiliently. Building a list in here is going to be easier because of the way the book is ordered. You're getting regiment stuff for free. That's happening free. You're getting new orders, free orders for your regiments in here that you can give out additional orders you're getting relics for free and the points costs the dozen or so points costs that have changed in here have all gone down it's it's a solid piece of work we haven't had catachans and cadian specific stuff since second or third i forget when they the jungle fighters rules and all that it might have been fourth actually we haven't had imperial guard specific regiments acting in different ways in separate ways uh, from each other for a long time now let me say it that way it's been a long time but now the flavor's back again now the way you can uh, organize and, and and move your regiments around is back again you can build a talon force which will be quicker and respond quicker than the Cadians. You can build a Mordian gun line ready, ready to stand and fight to the bitter end. Um, or if you're Cadians, you'll be giving out orders more efficiently, more effectively, more routinely. It's uh, guards should play slightly differently to each other. And guard were already doing well in 8th edition. They're going to do better. Anyway, that's my review. Um, a little bit less salty than the last time. Thank you, Games Workshop, for giving me the book to review. If you want to support me, anyone out there, then I've now got a patron. Go to Winners SEO Patreon, and thank you very much. And thank you to all the patrons who already support me. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Anyway, Codex Astra Militarum, coming to a Games Workshop near you. Thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.